morning joining us on the program is the head of innovation from Nigeria Data Protection Commission, NDPC. I'm talking to Chidera Ike Okonkwo. Good morning to you. Good morning, Vito. Thank you so much for the introduction. It's a pleasure to have you in our studios. It's a pleasure to be here too. So now let's start from the basics. When we talk about data protection and privacy for the average Nigerian, what should come to mind? Well, when we talk about data protection and privacy, the first thing that should come to mind is your personal information. So we're talking about personal information like your name, your email address, your home address, your phone number. Um, we're looking at information that, generally speaking, can be used to identify you as a person. That's what we refer to as personal information. And in the context of data protection and privacy, what we're looking at or what we regulate is how that information is processed. So by processing, we're talking about things like collecting, storing, sharing, whatever you do with this information. We are regulating that to make sure that it's done in a safe way to ensure that it is not only secured, but also kept private. Now, the agencies of government saddled with obtaining data from Nigerians. One of the broad ones is NIMC, where Nigerians are required to obtain a name. Many Nigerians over time find it difficult comprehending why there's a need for a name, there's a need for a BVN, there's a need for a team number for those who pay their tax, and they wonder if there cannot be a single database for Nigerians, noting that the government has this data in its possession. Okay, so this is something that we hear about quite often. And um, the truth of the matter is each of these um, identification uh, processes are essential depending on the sector where that information is being used. So if we look at the BVN, it's being used in the banking sector. If we look at the NIMSI, that's more of a national identification. That's something that identifies you either as a citizen of Nigeria or as a resident in Nigeria. It is now, you know, we're now hoping that that would be the backbone of every other information that is collected about an individual who is a Nigerian citizen or is residing in Nigeria. And then for the TIN number, like you said, that's for tax purposes. Um, in the future, we're hoping that, you know, there will be a harmonization of all of this personal information. But before then, there is something that is very important that needs to be done. And that is making sure that there is a foundation for the protection and the privacy of the personal data that we are collecting. So by this personal data, again, I'm referring to the BVN number, we're referring to the tax identification number, we're referring to the NIN, even your healthcare um, provider number, you know. So all of this information, we need to ensure that individuals understand how sensitive they are. Look, take for instance, when we talk about your tax identification number, if that number gets into the wrong hands, it can be very catastrophic for a person that is, you know, involved in that kind of breach, um, let alone something that, you know, identifies you for the purpose of providing health care services, you know. So this is why we have the Nigeria Data Protection Act in place. What it does is that it regulates the processing of all these personal information. And then it places an obligation on the people who are collecting and processing this information to ensure that they are putting in place adequate measures, technical and organizational measures, such that when this information has been collected or is being shared or is being stored, that it is not compromised in such a way that the information gets into the wrong hands or in such a way that someone who shouldn't have access to it, therefore now has access to it. So these are all the things that we're doing at the Nigeria Data Protection Commission. Well, I must commend the things you're doing at the Nigerian Data Protection Commission, but let's also look at it from the broad spectrum of the commission's mandate under Dr. Vicent Olatunji. There's been a very robust intention of intimating Nigerian via your social media handles on the commission's drive on the his watch. What has he brought to the commission since he assumed office? Well, um, I'm smiling because it's such a privilege to work under, you know, the person of Dr. Vincent Olatunji. Um, I believe that 
there was no other person that could have done the job as well as he's doing it. Um, his leadership has been very inspiring. The kind of ideas that he comes up with, the kind of initiatives that he leads, you know, the commission towards is very commendable. And um, it so happens that he's a data protection, he's a certified data protection officer. He's a public and private partnership specialist. He's also a fellow of the Institute of Information Management. All of this to say that he is very much qualified for the job. And under his leadership, we have seen the prosperity of our DPCO model, for instance. Um, whenever we attend any international event, and we attend a lot of international events, um, that's by virtue of our membership to various global and regional platforms. You know, one thing that always, that always you know, pops up is wow, the work that you're doing in Nigeria um, in the data protection and privacy ecosystem is tremendous. And within such a short you know, amount of time, because the, the commission was um, established formally under the Data Protection Act on the 12th of June, 2023. And um, before then, we were existing as the Nigeria Data Protection Bureau under his guidance as well and under his leadership. And so if you look at our track, re track record from 2019, when, um, as Dr. Vincent will say, when we were operating out of a small office um, with just um, about four staff, and then when we increased to about 12, and now we're almost um, 100 of us, um, you will see that we could have only made that kind of progress, you know, under the kind of leadership that we have. And um, it's a testament really to all the achievements that we have made so far. Well, quite commendable listening to your success story and growth trajectory. But now let's talk data and government. I, I understand the commission is also looking to navigate a pathway for data exchange. You know, at the beginning, we talked about the different data identification channels for Nigerians. What is this navigation in terms of a pathway for data exchange supposed to do for data in government? So when you refer to data exchange, um, just so that you know, we make sure that our viewers are being carried along, um, we can be looking at that in, the terms, in terms of cross-border data transfers. And cross-border data transfer deals with the transfer of data um, across various countries, um, jurisdictions, and even um, when you're sharing that data with an international organization. Um, it can also be within the context of sharing the information um, between government organizations. It could be sharing information uh, between a data controller, for instance, and a data processor or sub-processors. So it definitely um, depends on the context of that sharing. But again, um, at the commission, what we are very passionate about and what we are trying to make sure um, is that what we're trying to ensure is that whenever this data is shared, there are certain principles that must be followed. There are lawful bases that also need to be adhered to. Take, for instance, one of the lawful bases is consent. So what this means is that before you share um, a person's information, especially depending on the purpose for sharing that information, if, for instance, the purpose for sharing the information is for marketing purposes, you're definitely going to need the consent of the data subject and the data subject is you and i it's our information if that information is going to be shared they must reach out to you and inform you that the information will be shared they also have an obligation to tell you why that information is being shared and then you based on the information you have been given would then give your consent to say my data or my information can be shared with this organization for this purpose so the data protection act list out these lawful bases. In addition to consent, we have public interest, we have vital interest, we have legitimate interest. Um, so we have all of these lawful bases that are available for data controllers, data processors, people who collect uh, personal information, people who process this information, they need to be aware of this lawful basis. I'm calling it lawful basis, and as the name implies, if you process information without this lawful basis being in place. It means that you have processed it unlawfully. And when it's processed unlawfully, we take that as a non-compliance. And as a result of that non-compliance, we have the powers to actually invite such an organization to the commission to make a presentation on why that um, non-compliance has happened. Now, the data subjects, like you've said, talking about Nigerians, yourself and I, who have these issues when 
data is obtained unlawfully are there channels through which nigerians can report it some nigerians don't even know when it's been infringed upon and like i said but until the pandemic when there was the advent of loan sharks many nigerians could even understand the subject of their data being breached yes um absolutely there are channels for you to report a data breach or a non-compliance the very first one is our website. So our website is www.ndpc.gov.ng. When you go on that website, you can also find our phone number. It's a hotline. You can call anytime between 8 o'clock and 4.30 p.m., sometimes even 5, and someone will respond to you. We also have our dedicated email channel, and that is info at ndpc.gov.ng. That is info at ndpc.gov.ng um, another way you can reach out to us is on is on instagram so we're on instagram as well you can just search for nigeria data protection commission and you'll find us there we're also on linkedin we're on twitter um we're on every social media that you can think of but we're not on tiktok <laughs> well talking about tiktok and the young persons in nigeria I i've been following some of the commission's activities I think dating back in February, there was the Innovation Tech Hub, uh, a hackathon for young, young persons in Nigeria. Under your office as head of innovation, are there such programs? Is it on a quarterly basis? Are there opportunities for young persons in Nigeria to be more informed on data protection and privacy? Absolutely. So speaking of young persons, I think it's also important to know that Dr. Vincent's um, team is filled with young people. Um, he's also a young person. Um, we're all younger than he is, and I think that it's very intentional. I believe that he, he sees the potential in the youth and that um, with the you know, budding population of youth in Nigeria, it's very important that you pay attention um, to, the, to all that the youth have to offer. And um, speaking of the hackathon, the privacy hackathon that was held as part of the 2024 Privacy Week, um, the hackathon, like you said, was organized by the Nigeria Data Protection Commission. It shows our commitment to human capacity development, which is one of the pillars of our strategic roadmap and action plan. Um, we're also very passionate about involving the youth, making the issues of data protection and privacy easy for them to understand so we encourage them to get involved with what is happening because a lot of the social media apps for instance are being used by the youth and it's very important that they understand the magnitude of um, personal information that they are sharing on that um, platform on these platforms and what it means for you to actually share that information um, and what you need to know when your information is not being protected or when, you know, you suspect that, you know, there's something wrong with the privacy of that information. Um, we also encourage them to get involved with what we're doing within the data protection and privacy ecosystem. So we encourage them to follow us on social media, on our social media pages. We encourage them to take part of the activities. For instance, we currently have... Um, um, an ongoing partnership with um, the Ministry of Youth and what they're trying to do is to get more youth involved in um, the tech ecosystem and part of that tech ecosystem involves issues of data protection and privacy and um, I think it's really commendable the kind of response that we're getting from the youth. We have a lot of partnership with youth-led organizations apart from the ones in the public sector we also have them from the private sector um, myself being a youth, um, I always encourage my peers to get interested in what is happening, not just from a governance perspective, but also as part of what's happening in the ecosystem and how we can drive sustainability within the ecosystem. Now, when you talk about the ecosystem, more in perspective is the online space. And in the recent weeks, Nigerians have been more awakened to conversations along cybersecurity, which stemmed from the stood down stood down cybersecurity levy but now it, it begins with our mobile devices how do we begin to as individuals data subjects ensure that our online time is within the secure frame of not allowing persons access our data without our permission what are some of the cultures we can imbibe 
for a more safeguarded online space. Okay, so I'm glad you mentioned culture and um, one of the objectives of the Data Protection Act is to foster a culture of um, self-regulation, right? So self-regulation in terms of you need to understand what it means for you to, for, for you to, you know, own personal information. You need to understand that um, on your own, you know, you have access to this information. And so we always encourage people to know their rights as data subjects. And one of the first rights as a data subject is that you have a right to access the information that is being held by you by certain organizations. You also have um, rights to, to request that your information is deleted. You have various rights, you know, rights like data portability. So for instance, if you need to transfer your information uh, from one service provider to another, you should be aware that there is a right to data portability, which allows you to safely transfer that information from one uh, provider to the other. Um, the knowledge of these um, rights is very important because when you know your rights, there are certain things that you you allow or disallow within your space. And the reason why we're, I'm talking about this is also to bring up the issue of education. We are not an organization, you know, such as um, the Ministry of Education, for instance, but within our powers, um, and within our functions and our mandate as a commission, we have also begun the national certification process. Um, this process was born out of the need to in increase the number of certified data protection officers that we have in Nigeria. Before we, we had the national certification process, if you wanted to get a certification in data protection or privacy, you would have to rely on one of the international organizations. It costs a lot of money. Um, you know, it's dollar denominated. And another thing is that those certifications are usually based on the laws that are applicable in those foreign countries. So we're talking about GDPR, for instance. But if you find a youth who is looking for employment in Nigeria, your employer is interested in how well you understand the Nigerian um, legal landscape, right? So um, we then saw a need to have this national certification process. And as a matter of fact, we just um, signed an agreement with the Institute of Information Management, and they will be the certification body. So this is really huge for us, and I think it's a huge opportunity for Nigerians, um, for, pro for, for professionals who want to go into um, the field of data protection and privacy. I think it's an opportunity that they need to um, take advantage of. I also think that it's a huge opportunity for Africa um, as a continent because people in Ghana, for instance, in Kenya, who also want to take advantage of this certification can do that. This is because the law that we have in Nigeria is very similar in you know various aspects to what we have in other African countries. And this is all thanks to the harmonization of these um, various data protection um, regulations. So I think that a big issue that we're trying to solve for at the commission is the issue of education. The more you know, the better you're able to um, have or exercise control over your personal information and how it is used and how it is shared. Well, if you're just joining us on ADBN television this Tuesday morning, we are discussing the broad topic of data protection and privacy in Nigeria in line with the frameworks as provided by law under the Nigerian Data Protection Commission. I'm here seated with the head of innovation, Mrs. Chidera Ike Okonkwo, and it's been more on what the commission is doing to ensure that the online space is safer for Nigerians as data subjects. It is also your right to be able to regulate the amount of information you share in terms of your personal data. We'll take a break and when we come back, we'll have a template on some of the steps you can take for a safer online space and more on what the commission is doing in terms of a harmonization of a database for Nigerians to better impact the public sector. Stay with us. Ready for some exciting news? ADBN just launched its very own WhatsApp channel. Join our community for exclusive updates straight to your phones. Here's how. Open your WhatsApp and go to the Updates tab. Tap the plus icon and select Find Channel. Search for ADBN TV and hit Follow. Don't forget to turn on notifications for the latest updates. Your support means the world to us. Because at Advocate Broadcasting Network, we're not just a media outlet, we're a part of you.
Well, thanks for staying with us on the show this morning and more on the conversation as it concerns data protection and privacy. Is also the provisions of Nigerian's constitution 1999 as amended in section 37 for the protection of the citizens of Nigeria's data either via telephone calls, correspondence in their home or telegraphic conversation as well. And now whilst the context of privacy has different definitions to it, under the leadership of Dr. Vicent Olatunji of the Nigerian Data Protection Commission is a mandate to ensure that this dissemination of information to Nigerians is well disseminated. Still in our studios this morning is the Head of Innovation, Mrs. Chidera Ike Okonkwo. Now, let's come back to some of the technicalities, the modalities in place, and let's start with mobile devices. The level of literacy on using the computer is at different levels for different Nigerians, mm -hmm. but almost every Nigerian has a phone. Every Nigerian has applications on those phones they enjoy, much like the commission, most of them are on TikTok, <laughs> like you said, you're not. But let's talk about some of the steps that Nigerians can take as the first line data subjects to protect their data. Okay. So right now we will talk about the technical and organizational measures that a data subject you and I can put in place to ensure that our information is being protected and it's also being kept private. And the very first one I want to talk about is privacy policies. These are very important documents that you need to read. Um, I know that what's going through your mind now is, yes, but these policies are usually long and they contain a lot of legal jargons and we don't understand what it's saying. Um, on our own part as a commission, we're working with the data controllers and data processors, basically the people who have to put those policies in place to make sure that even though it's a legal requirement that they must have a privacy policy, they must do so in such a way that it is easy for you and I to read and understand. It must not be too long. The fonts should be easily readable. And all the information that I need to know or that you need to know is readily available within the very first 10, 20 seconds because we all know that our information, um, our attention span these days is shortening. Another thing that we need to be um, aware of is passwords. Um, passwords is, an, is a very interesting topic of conversation because when we talk about passwords, people roll their eyes and they say, uh, yes, I have a password. It's, it's very easy to remember. But another thing to note is that your password, as much as you should be able to remember it, it must also pass um, a certain test. So the first thing you need to note is it needs to be a certain length right at least 10 um at least 10 characters you need to have uppercase you need to have lowercase you also need to have special characters within your passwords another thing to note is two-factor authentication two-factor authentication is um, a security uh, measure that a lot of social media apps and um, online um, websites uh, are engaging in right now and what this means is that in addition to your password, there is another layer of security that is added. So this is very popular with um, WhatsApp, for instance. At some point when you're using WhatsApp, it logs you out and then it says you need to enter your password again. And you will also notice that if you're trying to recover an account, it will usually be linked to your email. So two-factor authentication basically means that you have one layer of security and then you have another layer of security. So if one fails, you have another as a backup. Um, speaking of backups, you also need to have backups, right? Um, if you're on the other side of the conversation, you're not a data subject or um, it's, we're not talking about you and I now, we're talking about organizations. So you're an individual who collects information of individuals, maybe for the purpose of doing business. You should also have two factor, um, you should also have backups, I beg your pardon. And those backups are important because if you lose all of that information, you're not able to provide these services. And if you're not able to provide these services, what it means is that the information is now in the hands of someone who doesn't have authorized access to it, right? And this may also lead to certain cyber, um, cyber security issues um, whereby they're holding you for ransom and saying you need to pay a certain amount of money in order to recover your account. So there are so many um, things that you can do to safeguard your personal data 
when you're online you also need to be vigilant you also need to pay attention to the website that you're visiting you may be visiting a website very often something like facebook and you don't realize that the a is written in an inverted way and you think you're on facebook but it's actually not facebook you also need to be you know vigilant about the kind of emails that you respond to and even calls nowadays people are hacking into social media groups on whatsapp for instance and they'll get maybe you're part of a group and something happened to me recently i got a call from someone who says he's mr clement and he's calling from my children's school and um that there was a pta meeting that was being held online now i know that pta meetings at the school is usually held you know physically it's not virtual so that already you know tipped my antenna because I, yeah it was a red flag because i was being vigilant and then he said um so i uh, will you be able to join i said no i won't be able to join i'm i'm at the airport right now i'm about to board the flight so it's not possible and he says oh that's okay i'm going to send you a code right now that you can use to join the meeting i'm like okay something is wrong i don't need a code to join a whatsapp meeting right and as soon as he said that it popped up on my phone and it was a six digit code and he wanted me to read it out to him and immediately i looked at that code i blocked the number immediately and then i received a message from the kids school saying there's someone who is impersonating a teacher in the school and make sure you don't give him any code that he asked for just block the number don't pick up the call so Perhaps it was easy for me to identify this because I'm a data protection professional. But, you know, we can also be data protection professionals when we have the basic knowledge that is required to know when we are being um, sort of deceived online. And so all of these things that I've said and even more, you can find them on our Instagram page especially. We share a lot of um, tips you know and a lot of information that is very valuable to know so that when you're ever in this kind of situation you know what to do and if for any instance you actually fall maga to one of these things you also know that you can easily uh, report the incident and you can be sure that there is a government agency that is taxed and dedicated to actually resolve these kind of issues now we've spoken largely to personal citizens of nigeria now on the part of government in terms of ministries departments and agencies mda there are also guidelines for the management of personal data by public institutions in nigeria as a commission in your mandate how do you ensure that these guidelines are followed strictly to the latter well um uh, the data protection act is not only for private sector it's also for public sector it is a federal government law right it is not optional so you can't just see it and say um i think i'm good i'll pass yes because um, the issue of non-compliance is a very serious issue and this is why we engage in a lot of sensitization campaigns aimed at both the public sector and the private sector we also go about um, go around visiting various ministries departments and agencies to let them know that such an agency exists to also let them know about our acts we even go a step further to offer them induction training which we do free of charge for any government ministry departments or um, agency we offer induction training to them um, at no cost so we come in and we give them the very basic information they need to know so the first thing we let them know is the overview of the nigeria data protection act after we let them know about that we talk to them about uh, technical and organizational measures that they can put in place within you know the space of when you've received the training and when you're leaving the training room and we also intimate them about the next steps that they need to take so after the training the very next thing that needs to be done is they need to create a budget you know for compliance with the data protection act this is be, um, essential because there is um, an audit that needs to be filed and you need to do this through a licensed data protection compliance organization that is a dpco so these dpcos are organizations such as law firms audit firms um you know businesses who offer certain um services you know that are sort of related 
or relatable to what we do. They apply to us and we license them. And when we license them, they go out to organizations that collect, that process, that store information, and they offer them this service. Um, one of the major services is that they help you to conduct a data protection audit. So the data protection audits, I must issue a disclaimer here. We're not coming to see what kind of data you're collecting or what kind of information you hold. All we need to know is what are your data processing activities? Do you have lawful bases that are in place? How do you address issues of data subject rights? How do you um, address issues of data sharing, cross-border data transfer? Do you have um, technical and organizational measures in place? Once all of these um, questions have been asked and answered, the audit process will then identify gaps within your um, processing systems or procedures. And then the DPCOs will then advise you on what you need to do to come into compliance with what the Data Protection Act you know, says you should be doing. And um, after that, they file the audit report with us. And then we certify that you have conducted your audit report for that year. So the audit report needs to be filed every year. And um, part of the compliance is that these organizations must also employ data protection officers. Now, if you think about how many ministries, departments, and agencies we have in Nigeria, it's a lot. The law actually says every one of them must appoint or designate a data protection officer. You could be a data protection officer. Even I can be a data protection officer. This is part of the job creation aspect of what we are doing. And this is also linked to the national certification process that I spoke about earlier. Is there so, a special institution for this? Well, that's, that's where the Institute of Information Management comes in, the one that we licensed as a certification body. So what will happen is that there will be special trainings, and then people will be able to write examinations after writing the exam, you will then be issued a certificate if you pass. How do Nigerians know when this training commences? Are they advertised or? They will definitely be advertised. So like you said, we have a very um, active social media presence and we share all the information that happens within the ecosystem that we govern. So for instance, if you go on our Instagram page today, you will see that we're holding a breakfast meeting with the Data Protection Compliance Organization, that is the DPCUs. The reason why we're having this meeting is part of accountability, right? It's also part of um, our, our mandate to ensure that that ecosystem is being carried along with everything that we're doing. So during that meeting, we will share information with them. We will also get feedback from them on how we can improve the ecosystem and how they can also improve you know their services so all of these information are shared on our social media pages regularly we also find us in um, certain dailies newspapers we're on YouTube I mean we we pride ourselves on making sure that when we do anything that we are making it very loud so we don't do things quietly now in terms of your interrelationship with sister agencies the relationship with the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, as it concerns the Consumer Code of Practice of 2007, mm -hmm. how has this brought about the ease in getting license for some of these licensees who must be in compliance with provisions as captured by the, the, the Act? Yes. So, like I said earlier, the Act is something that, you know, private sector and public sector have to comply with. And even those within... Um, uh, how do I call it now, the mother industry, because we're all agencies under the Federal Ministry of Communications, Digital. Innovation, and Digital Economy. And so um, it is even our expectation, and they know this, that as a sister agency, they must also be in compliance with the Data Protection Act. In addition to that, they must also ensure that all of their stakeholders are also in compliance with the Nigeria Data Protection Act. So if we're talking about NCC, for instance, we're looking at telecoms organizations or companies such as MTN, um, Globacom, all of them, right, even the ISPs. Every person who the NCC regulates also needs to comply with our act. And it's for this reason that, you know, we go into strategic um, agreements or strategic memorandum of understanding with various 
public sector organizations. For instance, we have an MOU with FCCPC, and we've been working very closely together again, you know, towards, you know, protecting the consumers. Because for data protection and privacy, we talk, to, we talk about data subjects. But data subjects are you and I. For FCCPC, they talk about consumers. For NCC, they talk about consumers. It can have different names, but at the end of the day, we're talking about individuals, right? So um, we all have to work together because everything that we do as a regulator is in the best interest of individuals. It's in the best interest of um, individuals, whether you call them data subjects, consumers, um, whatever nomenclature you may choose to, to call them. Well, as we look to wrap up our conversation this morning, just to note for our viewers some points to take away going into the future in terms of programs to look out for activities under the Commission. So much is happening, yes. So much is happening within the space. We're getting set to launch our general application and implementation directive, that is the guide. And what this document is, is um, it's a very important document for us. Um, after we got the Nigeria Data Protection Act in 2023, there was a need to come up with um, a sort of implementation framework to address various issues um, that need to be um, further explained in the Act. So issues like audit filing, what does it entail? Um, what kind of questions, for instance, do you ask during those kind of audits? It also addresses issues of um, cross-border data transfer, um, addresses issues of um, enforcement processes, so many issues that come up. And um, this is one document that is going to um, supplement the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation, its implementation framework. It's also going to you know, strengthen and bolster the um, implementation of the Nigeria Data Protection Act. So we're getting ready to launch that in a couple of months, uh, in a couple of weeks, I beg your pardon. And um, it's also important to know that we won the rights to host the Network of African Data Protection Authorities um, Annual General Meeting for 2025. Um, this is something that we're particularly proud of and we're looking um, forward to it excitedly. It's very important to us because we joined the Network of African Data Protection Authorities after we got our act, so we became full members. And um, it's been less than a year since we got our act. And to have that kind of recognition, you know, on a global platform is huge for us, you know. And um, so many other activities happening on the level of the Global Privacy Assembly, which we are also members of. And um, just to say that all of this will be um, shared on our social media pages. We will always be online, you know, to carry along the, uh, you know, the data subjects and other stakeholders, you know, as things progress within the ecosystem. Them. I'd just like to find out, is there a message to commemorate President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's first year in office anniversary from your commission, noting that he played a significant role in signing that act into law? Yes, um, he really did play a significant role in signing the act into law. As a matter of fact, we were all very tensed. Um, the days leading up, you know, to the end of the former administration, uh, because we had worked so hard on the bill, we were hoping that it would be signed by the former administration. And when it wasn't signed, you know, a lot of people thought that, you know, oh, here we go again, we'll start from the beginning. But it came as such a pleasant surprise to us that it was one of the first bills that he signed into law. And as a result of that, you know, we did not suffer the setback that was much anticipated. And um, as a result of that also, we are also seeing a massive, um, you know, movement within the ecosystem. For instance, job creation, which is one of his agenda, you know. And for us, we are poised to create over 500,000 jobs within the ecosystem. And one of the ways that we are doing that is through the national certification process that we spoke about earlier. Um, this is really significant for this administration. It shows that the federal government of Nigeria is dedicated 
to issues of data protection and privacy, especially now that you notice that, you know, um, the rate of digitization is really increasing. It's really expanding. Um, you also note that a lot of government services are also now online. And um, whenever you have an online presence, you open yourself up to certain risk. It therefore becomes important that you have uh, measures in place to address those risks. Um, I think it's really commendable that that act was signed under um, his administration. I also believe that um, we're going to see a lot more um, interest on the part of the federal government, especially in light of all our various achievements, um, not only in the continent of Africa, and, but also on the global um, platform. I must thank you, Mrs. Chidera Ikeo Konkwo, for taking our time to grace our invitation and also inform Nigerians on the role your commission is playing in further securing their data. We appreciate you. You're welcome.